Hey, this is Mr. Raiden. This is AP Calculus AB, or maybe it's Pre-Calculus, maybe it's Calculus Honors, maybe it's your grandmother watching. Who knows? Whoever's watching, this is called an introduction to limits, and limits are the foundation for all of calculus. Uh, it's a very, very simple concept. Some students make it way harder than it has to be, but it's a very simple concept in which all of calculus is based upon. And so uh, one of my students who got a 5 on his AP Calculus AB exam told me that limits were the most important thing he learned all year because it was the foundation for what he learned. So let's say uh, I'm going to give an example of limits in real life. Yes, math can be done in real life. And let's say we have here a cup, uh, beaker of water. And that beaker of water is at 20 degrees Celsius. And so I'm going to do this. Ready? 0 degrees Celsius, uh, 5 degrees Celsius. 10 degrees Celsius, 15 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Celsius, and this is where my liquid water starts off. And I, of course, have ice, some ice cubes, okay? Zero degrees Celsius, my water is frozen. It is going to be at zero degrees Celsius. And I'm going to put this, these ice cubes inside my beaker of liquid water. And so what's going to happen to the beaker of liquid water's temperature? Uh, as we measure it, it's going to go down, 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 right? And so it's going to go down, 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 down until it hits some equilibrium temperature. And let's say this equilibrium temperature is at 15 degrees Celsius. Well, what happens, obviously, to the solid water? The solid water is going to melt, of course, and that temperature is going to go up, 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 up once it melts totally, and it will end up coming here at an equilibrium temperature, okay? And so this is roughly what the graph would look like. A solid water might might actually, uh, remember, it's got to break the intermolecular forces of the solid water, the, the hydrogen bonding, so it might be at zero degrees Celsius until all of it melts. And then that temperature is going to go up and then equilibrium here at some value. Now, think about my seconds. Let's say, let's say we call that five seconds. And then we have 10 seconds, and then 15 seconds, and 20 seconds, and 30 seconds, and so on and so forth, 35 seconds, all the way up to infinity, right? Uh, amount of seconds. Now, let's think about it. Temperature is a function of time, isn't it? The temperature is a function of time. And so it is f of x is equal to temperature as a function of time. So as time continues to increase, and let's first just look at the liquid water. So we're only going to look at the liquid water here as temperature and as a function of time, okay? And so if we take a look as the limit, as the limit of x approaches 5 seconds, what is happening as we approach five seconds. So as we get closer and closer and closer and closer to this five second line right here, okay, what's happening to my temperature? My temperature is going down, 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 and let's say it gets to some 18 degrees Celsius. It's, it's converging in on 18 degrees Celsius as we approach this time five. Now, uh, I'm not saying what's the temperature at exactly five seconds. I'm saying what's the temperature approaching as it uh, as it gets towards five seconds, and that is the limit concept as we're approaching. Now you can see how as we're approaching 10 seconds, what's the limit as x, which is time, approaches 10 seconds of my function? Well, I'm getting closer and closer and closer and closer here to 17.5 degrees Celsius, right? 17.5 degrees Celsius. I'm getting closer to 17.5 as I continue to get closer to 10 seconds. Now, as the limit of time, or x, approaches infinity, as it goes on forever, what is my temperature approaching as it goes on forever is 15 degrees Celsius, isn't it? Because we are at equilibrium, aren't we? And so you can see, we don't really have a, an exact number of time equals infinity. We don't have that number. Infinity is not a number, it's a concept. And so as we approach infinity, as this water continues going on forever, we're approaching 15 degrees Celsius because that's the equilibrium temperature of my water. And that is an example, a real-life example of limits. Okay. So let me give you two 
uh, mathematical examples of limits. Uh, we Here we have the function of x equals, in parentheses, x mi minus 2 over x minus 2. Now, all of you guys would say, well, that function equals 1 because this cancels out with this. Well, that's true. The function is going to equal 1, which means your y value is going to equal 1 for every single point. Now, just think about it. If you put 0 and 0 in for x and x, negative 2 over negative 2 is 1. If you put negative 1, you get negative 3 over negative 3, that's 1. If you put negative 2, 1, 1, 1. You get 1 at every single spot. You put 1, you get negative 1 over negative 1, right? And so the function is looking like this. Now, there's a problem, though. There's the problem is it, we cannot put 2 in here, can we? We cannot have x equaling 2. Because if you put x equaling 2, you have 2 minus 2 over 2 minus 2. That's 0 over 0. And whenever we have a 0 in the denominator, that function is undefined. And so, yes, your function is equal to 1, except there's a stipulation here is x cannot equal 2, can it? Which means at 2, there's a big hole. And so you can see, at every single point, we equal 1, except for this value of 2. We can't have a value at 2. There, there's a little hole there. Now, if you go to 1.999, put 1.999 in your calculator, do it. 1.999 minus 2 over 1.999 over 2. You'll get really, really, really close to 1. If you put 1.999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
But let's take a look the limit as x approaches 2. So as we're approaching, as we're going on my graph, do, 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 we're getting closer to 2. Remember, this is the 2 line right here. This is the 2 line right here. As we go, do, 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 we get closer. We're, get, we're getting closer and closer and closer to what value? To 4. So we're getting closer. The limit is approaching 4. As we go this way from this side, guess where we're getting closer to? As we approach 2 from the left hand, or sorry, from the right hand side, we're getting closer and closer and closer to 4, which means the limit exists. The point also is defined, and let me go through that again. Points are defined. Limits either exist or don't exist. So points are either defined or undefined. Limits either exist or don't exist. The limit exists. The limit as x approaches 2 is equal to 4. Okay, we, we can also have an, another thing. Let's say the limit as x approaches 1 of my function. So as we're approaching, this is 1 right here. So as we get closer to 1, what, not, what y value are we getting closer to? We're getting closer to 1, aren't we? Let's say we're going as the limit as x approaches negative 1. As we're go getting closer to negative 1, we're getting closer and closer to negative 1. When x is equal to negative 1, what y value are you getting me closer to? 1. Okay? And so this is the concept of limits. And we're going to be going more in depth on this throughout. This is the introduction to limits. Hope this helped. This is the first video. You're going to continue on, and I'll catch you, catch you, catch you.